Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we're going to take a look at bubbles. So the bubbles that form on the rim of a glass when you pour in any liquid. And I had this case where people asked me about that two times in the last couple of weeks. So I thought maybe it's time to make a tutorial out of it. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's keep going. Let's have a look what we are going to do today. This is our bubble scene. Small disclaimer, we are not going to do the whole scene, we just care about the rim bubbles. If you want to make this scene yours, of course, there's my Patreon where you can download it. The link is down in the description below. So what we are going to do is take Octane's nested dielectrics and the cloner or the MoCraft setup in Cinema 4D for a spin and create those nice rim bubbles that you can use in all sorts of your projects or scene files. If you're doing visualizations for beverages, refreshments or the cosmetics industry, this might be very useful. But now, without further ado, let's jump right in. Alrighty, let's get started. I loaded our backdrop scene. By the way, if you have the feeling you've seen this before, I made a video that's very similar with the nested dielectrics and we are going to use that quite a bit in this one as well. So make sure it's turned on in the renderer right here. But this one has an extra twist to it and also it's never a bad idea to refresh your memory. By the way, I still recommend the old video in the upper right corner if you want. If you've seen last week's video, it's very similar in structure to this week's video in that we are going over the concept first. To do so, we need a body of water and a bubble. So let's do this first. We are going to get a cylinder, make the height 50 millimeters and the rotational segments maybe 64, then move it up a little bit so it's above the ground. Something like that. Let's create a bubble also, and we are going to use just a sphere for that, a little bit smaller one than this. Let's see. Yeah, something like this is good. Let's also create those materials, and those are very simple if you don't care about roughnesses and stuff like that. So let's go to create and then to specular material. As we always do, the first action in the specular material is to go to transmission and set this to one. Here we go. Then call this one water and duplicate it and call this one air. Here we go. For the water, we want to go with an index of 1.33. And for the air one, we want to go with an index of 1, which is no refraction at all. Alrighty, let's assign the materials. So the water obviously goes to the cylinder and the air to the sphere. Right now, we don't see the sphere because we haven't assigned the nest dielectrics priorities. If you don't know about them, again, shout out to my former video. You can search nested dielectrics in my video feed. So for the air to take effect, we need to go to the common tab here and set the priority in the material. The rule of thumb here is that higher priority displaces lower priority. So if we have the air displace the water away from it, then it has to have a higher priority or the water has to have a lower priority. So if we set the priority to 1, then the air displaces the water. As you might see, or maybe not, let's go outside of the camera to show you a little bit better. We only see half of the sphere here, as the other one is sticking out inside of the air. And obviously there's no difference in density from air to air, so you don't see any reflection or refraction. So far so good, and hopefully so far so understandable. What we can do to mitigate that and make the bubble visible here in the top half is that we can duplicate our sphere and move it as a child of the original one. And then just make it a little bit smaller, for example, 9mm instead of 10. And now for the outer bubble, since it's a thin film of the same water, let's assign the water here again. So this creates a perfect bubble, at least outside of the water, in the inside, if you paid close attention, you can see that the refraction looks slightly different. So if I put in the air material again, and then the water, you can see there's some slight change. And this comes from the fact that I'm using, of course, the same water material on the sphere as on the cylinder with the same priority in here. So basically the air bubbles out the wall is continued into the water surface, which is not correct. 
So what we can do to avoid this is to duplicate the water here and then go to the priority and set this to minus one, so lower than the main water priority. And if we assign that now, you can see now it gets the old behavior, which is the correct one. So now the cool thing is that I can take the bubble and move it around, and if it's inside of the water, it looks correct, but also if it sticks out of the water, it looks correct. To round off things, and I mean that literally, we can select both of the water shaders, go to basic, and then scroll down and enable rounded edges. Go to the rounded edges tab and create a shader here, move inside of the shader and set it from fast to accurate. Since we have a very large scene, I'm going with a rather large value here, four millimeters. Now you can already see the effect on the rim of the water body, but not between the bubble and the water. To make this work, we have to tick consider others. And now we have a lip here. To make this a little bit more accurate, we can increase the samples. Let's go with the maximum of 16. And now we have a nice natural lip between the water and the bubble. And the really cool thing is that it moves with the bubble no matter where we go. Alrighty, this closes our concept. So let's build this for our actual scene. And welcome to our laboratory scene. As you've seen in the beginning, we are going to add the bubbles around the intersection between the fluid and the flask. Now, since the next couple of minutes are about creating the scene with MoGraph and not rendering, let's turn off rendering. And also because we need to see the water, let's turn off the water flask from our viewport and then go to the startup layout. I know there must be dozens of methods to automate that, but we are going with the simple one. To distribute our clones, we are going to use a spline yet again. So let's create a circle spline. And I already know that we are searching for a radius around 50 in the X Z axis. And then the only thing we need to do is move it up around here, then create a cloner. Here we go. Those objects uh, look eerily similar. So I sometimes click on the SDS object here and then go to object mode and drag in the spline. We already know the next step, which is creating a sphere for our bubble. By the way, for the sphere, I always go for a hexahedron. This gives me a very nice non-pinching geometry. Of course, the sphere is a little bit too big. I already know the value and it's exactly two millimeters. Let's create a child of the sphere within itself and then go with a value of 1.9. And last but not least, let's move it inside of the cloner so it clones. Small word of caution here about the numbers I put in. Obviously, I built this before in my real-world sized flask scene. If you are building this with another object, then I would pay attention to how it looks rather than what numbers I put in. Alrighty, let's make this more realistic because even spacing isn't really realistic. To do so, let's go to the cloner and tinker around with the start and end value. If you watch real-world reference, you tend to notice that bubbles are flocking to each other. So let's try something similar and moving them closer together something like that. Now this has still equal spacing. To randomize this up a little bit, what we can do is get the offset to 100. This doesn't change much in itself, but now we can use the offset variation to create other clusters, something like that, for example. Alrighty, we reached a point that almost all Mocra setups reach, and this is effector time. But despite what you think, probably we are not going with a random effector, but a plane effector. And no, we are not going to affect the position, but again, the scale and uniform and absolute scale by minus one. And now all of our clones are gone. I opted for this workflow because this lets us use fields here. So within the scale we applied with the plane effector, we just can choose a random field and therefore get our randomness. Right now, this exactly acts like a random effector, but there are a couple of benefits that we are going to use. For one, it's the contour method here, and we're going to set this to quadratic. This gives us a curve we can then adjust. If you look at real world reference, for example, your coffee in front of you, you can see that most of the bubbles are medium sized and there are only a small portion of those who are big. Actually, now that we scaled those down, let's get a couple more bubbles in here by going to the cloner and set this to maybe 40. And now you can see a little bit better what we're doing. So by changing this curve here, I'm basically adjusting the bias of the scale. 
and I already tinkered around with this and minus 50 seemed to be a good value. Right now though, the distribution randomness is determined by a noise, which I don't want. I truly want random values. So we get those big bubbles we are talking about. Also to not get too small of a size in the bubbles, we want to limit the strength here to maybe 75. Here we go. So this is the setup I ended up with. But of course, this is not all of our setup. What we need to do is align our spheres because right now the bigger spheres are intersecting here and in real world, they are all aligning with the glass. So let's go to the cloner, activate it and then go for another plane effector. Inside of the plane effector in the parameter, it's moving the clones on the Y axis, but we need to move it on the X axis to move it away from the rim of the glass. As you can see, they are all moving at the same rate, but we need the big bubbles to move further in than the smaller ones. To do that, what we actually can do is go to fields and drag in our other field that we use for the size. Now, if we go to the parameter again and move, you can see that actually the opposite happens. The smaller ones are moving further. Of course, there's a fix for that. And in the fields, this is a invert here. So if we click that, then you can see the bigger ones move further. And now if we just get the right value in here, for example, 1.5, how did I know that? Then all of them seem to be aligning just fine. Alrighty, almost there. What we need to avoid is intersections because they don't play well with nested dielectrics, at least in this small scale here. Fortunately, there's a factor for that as well, and this is the pusher part. And this wasn't added to the cloner because the cloner wasn't selected, so we have to do that manually. What we need to set here in the pusher part is the radius. And obviously this is the radius of the outer sphere. So let's set it a little bit further apart 2.1. And you can see it's sort of working. At least if we increase the iteration, sometimes it works better. For this, it didn't. So what I did end up with in my example, instead of pushing them apart is hiding them. So now we have aligned clones on the edge of the glass. Now let's go back to the octane layout and fine tune this a little bit. Alrighty, welcome back to Octane Land. Let's shade this first. It's the same as in our concept scene. So I have the fluid material two times with different priorities. I know that this is the right priority. So let's give it to the sphere above and then to the sphere below. Let's go with the air. And now we have our bubbles. So if we move down here, you can see they're already sort of working. Before we go on tweaking our bubbles to make them look more realistic, Let's talk about a couple of gotchas some of you already might run into. For example, the Ray Epsilon here. I made a dedicated video about this in the upper right corner, but the gist of it is we need a lot of precision with the thin walls and nested dielectrics in our scene, and therefore we need a very small Ray Epsilon. So let me take out two zeros after the dot to show you what a bad Ray Epsilon looks like, and we have artifacts and the scene is looking nothing alike. So let's put this back and carry on. The next gotcha is intersections with the bubbles and the glass plane. Even if you set up everything correctly, this can still cause artifacts. And I think it's an error in the code of the nested dielectrics of Octane. So let's show you by going to the circle and enlarge it. And if we enlarge it enough, there are some artifacts and it looks like as if the bubbles went through the glass. Also, it looks like the water doesn't exist beyond the bubbles. I know that the minimum distance for my scene is 50.25, so we have the best outcome yet. Alrighty, let's carry on with tweaking. So the first thing that comes to mind is that our bubbles are really big. So let's make them a little bit smaller by going to the random field where we control everything like this. So the minimum value here, let's raise it to 37.5 and this makes our bubbles smaller. Also, you see very few bubbles here. So let's go to the cloner and make them a little bit more. Let's raise the value to 75 maybe. And yes, this sort of looks more lifelike. The next one surprised me a little bit because the change is subtle, but the effect is huge, at least I think so. So I looked at real world footage again and I thought maybe those bubbles are a little bit too high here because they stick underground a little bit more. 
So I did go to the circle and moved it down ever so slightly. And now just the small change is looking much more realistic. Very nice. All right, countdown. Two more actions to finish off this video. First, we are going to do what we did before. So select the materials, go to rounded corners, select them, make the shader and go to accurate, make the samples as high as possible, check consider others and go with a radius of 0.5. Now, the chance is that you don't see it from this perspective. So let's go inside of the object here and have a closer look. And now you can see, yes, we have the nice lip at our bubbles. Alrighty, second and last action. Let's go back to the camera here. And this is already looking pretty good. Of course, you can tweak the arrangement of the bubbles a little bit better, but we will leave that for now. As a last action, I want to select all the glass materials here, or also fluid materials. The air is not important. Then go to dispersion, go to Abbey number, and set a value of 20. So now you have dispersion or aberration in your glass, which makes it even more realistic. I have a video on this as well. You can find it in the upper right corner. And this is our tutorial done. Thank you for sticking with me that long. Let's thank those people who made it possible. My Patreons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Just a Freakin, and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers, for the thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, Graham Bagnell, James Conkle, Joel Mackimer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Matthew Hall, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Ralph, Random Capibara, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, Shamos Johnson, Shiro 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. Hi there and welcome to the after show party. What I always ask myself during this tutorial is if there's a name for this kind of rim bubbles as I call it. If someone knows that then please drop me a line in the comments. Also hopefully you couldn't feel it during the tutorial but this was a little bit rushed as I'm spontaneously visiting my mother next weekend, so I don't have time to make the tutorial there, so I pre-recorded everything. Now back to the usual. Thank you very much for listening that long and watching my tutorial. You can show your support and help me fight the algorithm overlords by posting a glass emoticon in the comments down below. No matter what glass, any glass will do. That leaves me with wishing you a nice rest of the weekend a great start into next week, or if you're watching this later, a good time overall. Cheers and happy prioritizing. Bye.